Jared is the new sexy. Fuck you! Fuck this shit! Fuck everything about you! I hated everything! I quit! God damn it! God damn it! Welcome to Nerd is the new sexy, and today we'll be talking about nerd rage. Yes, also, this is episode 50, a boss episode. We should probably awesome. bring that up. Well, this is, as always, is Gambit uh, with me. This is... Wildfire One! And we got a special guest today, and uh, her name is... Samus. You guys have heard me talk about Samus. She's uh, she's my little cousin who's never seen Star Wars. Yeah, she, she is, is a disappointment to her, her, her family, and her entire race. And Star Wars. And I Star feel Wars. like a failure. You should. You should probably kill yourself. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Anyway, so today we are talking about Nerd Rage, as I just exa- showed right there. Nerd Rage can be anything about anything, and I will have to say that we as nerds do have a definite higher level of rage than most people. So, we'll just get right into it. Um, I will say one of the biggest things that does fly me off into a Nerd Rage is video games. Uh, I used to tell people all the time, people are like, what did video games teach you? Like, hand-eye coordination, fantasy, imagination? No, no. Fa- fucking video games gave me Tourette's. I, I gotta agree. And, and you know what it is? It's it's not necessarily... There's certain video games I'm fine with. I can die over and over again and I'm great. But there's it's always first-person shooters that just bring that anger out, that rage. And it's not necessarily, oh, I died. You know, that sucks. Oh, I died over and over and over again. That sucks too. No, it's when the same person fucking kills me is when i'm like oh that motherfucker's gotta die then i have a vendetta out for his ass and i still get killed by his ass because what reason or another and that's the point i'm just like i want to turn this off must fight fucking anger oh get it out of the way my biggest nerd rage moment and i'll and it's on my facebook page and i'll re you know re re, uh, repost the picture of it i got so angry i threw an xbox controller into my flat screen tv broke both the flat screen tv and the controller i was playing call of duty i'll never forget i I was was playing call of duty and i was just getting owned over and over in a tournament and this tournament was like a big deal because we were trying to make like nationals and whatever for me and my team and i was just having a bad day i don't know if my fingers didn't work i was like not on pepsi but i just went off on this huge rage and just like hucked my fucking controller and just smashed my tv and i was very upset oh no and and it's funny that that happens and you know when you're like the 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 person outside of the rage and you see it you kind of want to chuckle and laugh and you're like what the fuck's that guy's problem but when you're the dude raging like the world around you is just (laughs) on fire and you want to burn it what about you uh samus give us some uh stories about some nerd rage that maybe you have experienced or you've done i've never actually broken anything either before <laughs> I've never taken it that far. But have you have like how's the what's the first furthest like in nerd rage have you ever you ever had? Just getting pissed off and throwing down the controller, like turning off the game, pretty much. Yeah, well that's that's understandable. It's called rage quitting. So there you go. Yeah, well it's like when the same guy is killing you over and over again, like you said, and then you get like angrier and angrier, so you can't concentrate on trying to kill them back. It's ridiculous. What games do you like to play? Give us a little introduction on yourself. The Division. Okay. What What do you like about The Division? Besides uh, the fact PvP. that it's the worst game ever made. It <laughs> is not the worst game ever. That game is I a real-life destiny. It is so terrible. It is so bad. And everybody who plays it needs to choke on a big, yeah, fat, coarse cock. I feel like you're saying that because you suck at Division. feel like you don't know me very well. I'm great at all <laughs> first-person shooters. Not all of them, but you, you get drilled. Have you played it? Have you played it recently, though? I have never played The Division, nor will I ever play The Division. Well, you can't say anything bad about it if you haven't played it. Yes, I can! <laughs> <laughs> the rage. The rage. There's the rage. No, since we're raging on this, no, let me rage on this. No, Fuck yeah, why do you not like it? Why? What's, like, what's the problem okay. with the game? First yeah, and foremost... Exactly. First and foremost, if your internet goes down, you can't play the fucking game. There's no storyline. If their servers go down, you can't play your fucking game. I'm not shelling out $65 plus or more for a fucking game that I can't play. On top of that, it is a real-life destiny. The whole point of it is to raid with other people and to get gear. Oh, look at these shiny new boots I got. And these (laughs) boots are made for walking. Like, that's (laughs) bullshit. (laughs) It has has no storyline. And the storyline that it does have is very ill-conceived at best it's like a child sat in his room and was like what if new york went down oh instead of making a fully functional storyline i'm just gonna put this fuck that game (laughs) so okay samus 
We've heard why he doesn't like it. Why do you like it? Okay, it's not all about loot. Most of it is, but not all of it is. I like it because it's PvP. Like in the dark zone, go in, shoot people, just kill everyone, basically. Okay. Do you like to piss people off in the game? Do you? I love to piss people off in the constitute game. constitute nerd rage in this game? I definitely do, because this is the most frustrating game I've ever played in my life. Then give us give us a story. Tell me, uh, tell me one time that you have given someone nerd rage. Which let's let's be honest, all three of us love to piss other players off. I mean, to an extent. Hey, wait, whoa! Don't lump me in that category. I had never instigated. <laughs> no, no, Gambit. <laughs> don't even bullshit. You and I have probably <laughs> some people throw their PS4s out their fucking window, dude. <laughs> yeah. <it's true. laughs> I mean, Battlefield. Battlefield 4 alone, dude, just like, just not even really seriously playing. <laughs> just team teabagging people. <laughs> Why are you this, having the whole, whole squad come like hunt for us and we kill them again? Back to the original question, Samus. Uh, give us a story. Tell me one time you, one or two times you constituted nerd rage in another player. There's been a lot of times. I mean, people get so angry on that game. So you can go inside the dark zone and that's where it's PvP. And uh, if you have, like, a group of people just camp outside of a checkpoint, which is the most douchiest thing you could possibly do. Camp and uh, checkpoint? It's like a spawn kill. Yeah, it's like a spawn kill, basically. So camp outside the checkpoint, throw grenades, so when they walk out, they immediately get hit with a grenade or, like, a fire <laughs> turret. That just does not <laughs> sound fun. Yeah, and if you have, like, a team of people, there's all kinds of skills that you can have. So let's say you throw out, like, a fire turret, like, uh, a fire grenade... And uh, like a shock turret, secret mind, stuff like that. So as soon as they walk outside of the checkpoint, they're hit with all this stuff and immediately die. They have like no chance whatsoever. You can like clap over like their body. Game? What? What was that? You said you like this game? This is why I like this game. So so uh, when you're done killing them, you just like walk over and clap on top of their body because they can see you before they respawn. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because their mic will cut off as soon as you uh, kind of have to like smack them, like bitch slap them to kill them. So for the final kill, so like you'll hear people screaming into their mics. They're like, fuck you. And they'll get cut off as soon as you kill him. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Gambit, yeah. Gambit, what do you think, man? All I heard in that story was, was blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I'm a raging bitch. <laughs> he's, he's against division. So, so I can understand. It's okay. No, it's not that I, it's not that I'm against division. I mean, I am against division. I'm, I'm horribly against division. But that's not even it. It's the fact that, like, I just can't stand any game that where, like, I don't know. I just can't stand any game that's online only. That's my biggest pet peeve with it is when you're online only that doesn't constitute a game. You cannot classify yourself as a game being online only. It's fucking bullshit in my book. It really is. Even if you're not playing the Dark Zones, the PvP, it still has to be connected to online. What if I'm poor? Now, I'm not poor. But what if I'm poor and I barely afford my system as it is? I want to be able to play a fucking game. And if I can't afford it online, now you're going to punish me because I'm poor? Fuck you. Fuck everything about you. <laughs> fuck your mom. Fuck your horse. Fuck everything about you. See, it's not necessarily that that bothers me. I don't mind be being online. We've played games. I've played games that are all just online. I mean, you play any MMO RPG out there, it's an online-based game. What bothers me is that when people have to use gimmicks or whatever to win, like, you know, just killing people well, like, yeah, no, that, that, at that, the that, spot. That, that, or, yeah, that, that's my thing, too. It's like, 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 like bitchy Samus over here. Like, <laughs> I'm a new player. I don't know the game. And you self-admittedly saying that this is kind of a bitch move to do, to sit at a, yeah. a checkpoint and kill people, that's fucked up. That means that you have no skill, no talent towards the game, and you are – like, don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah, there is a point. Like, like, <clears throat> like, I'm a huge advocate of Call of Duty. At one point, with Black Ops 1, I was 14th in the world. My team was number two in the world. We were awesome. And I, and I used to – it used to drive me crazy. People were like, oh, you're camping. Dude, it's a fucking war game. I'm supposed to camp. Like, you don't go to Iraq right now and be like, wow, and just run around. <laughs> Jump like, around and shit. You, you don't do that. It's a war game. And, like – so like I, camping never bothered me and, and strategically setting up the map that doesn't bother me either those things don't bother me but like but it but it does bother me and i used to get on my team about this is let's not spawn rate people you can strategically set up the map so that we can all camp a certain spot on the map and that way we can hold down the map that's strategic but to just 
spawn rate people to learn where the spawns are on the map and then just sit by the spawn and wait for somebody to spawn is like the worst playing of any game ever whether it be division call of duty anything like that when you spawn rate people that just pisses me the fuck off now call of duty has that same thing where when you get killed it records like 10 seconds of your name so what i love to do to like kind of flip the script on my nerd rage is i would scream obscenities that weren't obscenities so like somebody would kill me and i'd be like clown shoes clown shoes <laughs> so they get like 15 seconds of me saying some really ridiculous shit and it would make them laugh and then they would come after like hunt after me but yeah but like just purposely pissing people off now i don't purposely piss, i don't go out of my way to purposely piss people off when i play a game i have in the past i, I mean I, I i i the only time i ever do is when like i feel like it's it's warranted or justified like when i find a hacker or somebody who's cheating oh i love to piss those guys off <laughs> like yeah. fuck you like you have to cheat to, to, that's another one of my nerd rages. Is like, look, a game should be fun, ideally, right? Like, yeah. I'm, that's that's the whole point of it. There should be challenge to it, right? And, and if you have to cheat to make yourself feel better, like like your your self esteem is so low that you you live your life by how well your KDR is. Just eat a dick, dude. Like, who cares? I don't care about my KDR. I really don't. People brag about their KDR. Oh, my KDR is fucking. Uh, 3.5 i'm like i don't give a flying rat's ass with my kdr yeah, I, I play for fun i don't care about my score well even when i was play, even when i was playing competitively your kdr doesn't actually mean anything because realistically if you're even a if you're even a, a 1.5 player right uh, you know or, or 1.7 yeah eventually your kdr is going to reflect three four five because if i get like if i get let's say i get 20 kills every match and 10 deaths eventually you know, you do the math on that. Eventually, it's going to be 3.0, 4.0, 5.0 because you're you're always consistently getting more kills than you are deaths. So, like, your lifetime KDR doesn't mean anything. I'm not impressed by your lifetime KDR. That's not going to get my dick hard for you. Let's let's continue with uh, Samus's story. You you were you tell us a story about you know how you've made someone rage quit or just rage in in general. I'm trying to think. That's most of them is the checkpoints, but also uh. Do you do that, them. or you, do you watch other people do it? Both. <laughs> you're one of those gamers they're like people appear, like fucking hate the meat they're like oh god damn it that bitch she keeps fucking killing me at this fucking spot i mean i don't get me wrong when i was when i when i first started gaming like for first person shooters i i, I did some spawn killing but then i kind of grew out of it and i was like this isn't fun tell us how you've made people rage quit or rage or get pissed off i mean you said that when you kill someone you'll hear them go fuck and then they'll die and then you won't hear them say and I, that is hilarious in my opinion that is the best part where they're screaming and you run up and smack them and it cuts them off because then uh, they just respawn immediately. Bad. After you've killed someone about 10 times or so, they'll respawn in like one second. <laughs> so you're like, right fuck, and it's gone. They're like, they can respawn again. Fuck! Yeah, you're like charging out of the checkpoint towards you or something, screaming. But uh, we, we don't just do the checkpoints, just to be fair. <laughs> okay, that's better. You're not, not you're just not, checkpoints. Okay, so you're not you're not you're not that much of a uh, of an asshole. No, it's it's not just checkpoints. There's a uh, there's like extractions in the dark zone and things like that. That uh, if one's going off, you can see it on the map. You run to it and you kill them. You've also had experience with like battlefield and stuff like that, right? I'm the one raging when I play battlefield. Well, let's let's hear that story. Okay, I've well, rage quit. Many times playing Battlefield. Well, the it's big... the guys with C4 that drive oh, me yeah. insane. I hate that. I hate that so much. That's like that's how Sunrai plays. He's the C4 player. He loves doing that shit. He would be the C4 player. That's such a douche move. <laughs> that's <laughs> such a douche move. Uh, what about you, Gambit? I know there's a few good, good, ma good stories that we've made people rage or you've raged on when we played uh, Battlefield. My favorite story, and I used to tell that at work all the time, is when you finally got me convinced to play Battlefield 4. Mm -hmm. Like, admittedly, I, I am a Call of Duty fan. I do not like Battlefield. I think Battlefield is stupid. I think it's <clears throat> irritating. I think it, it is the <clears throat> the biggest baby game shooter in the world. And so the, I'll try to recreate the whole thing. So me and Wilder are playing. And mind you, this is my very first match ever. It just starts off, and I'm and I am just I'm getting the lay of the land, and I'm just getting sniped over and over and over. And that that, that doesn't piss me off, but it, I mean it's it, it's it like lit the fire for my nerd rage. And mm -hmm. then I'm playing the game, and I'm just like, this is fucking bullshit. Like, oh oh oh, 
I, I'm a normal soldier. I'm a medic, but I know how to fly a helicopter or drive a tank. Like, because that doesn't take any kind of special fucking training. <laughs> oh, no, I don't have to get a kill streak to earn a tank. I can just hop in a tank and oh, oh, don't worry. If I if I get in a, if I fucking get in an airplane and fly it across the map and dive it into a tower, no big deal. A new plane's gonna respawn in 30 seconds because they don't cost 14 billion dollars to make. Yeah. No. No, and then this whole thing is going down. Meanwhile, they're playing this whole time, and I'm just bitching. I am just raging. I am just so mad at every aspect of the game. The way they run, the way they shoot, the way they pull, pilot the planes. Everything about this game was just making my, me so angry. And at the very end of the game, Wild goes, uh, I got first place and you got second place. You still <laughs> you still hate this game? Yes! Yes, I do! <laughs> but you got to admit, you kind of you kind of fell in love with it after we played a bit. No, I only played it like I only played it because you were playing it. And I like yeah. my friends. I never once touched Battlefield Four on my own ever. I was Which never is- sitting. I was never sitting in my house and be like, "Oh, what do I want to do today? Oh, I want to play the dumbest game ever. I want to play fucking Battlefield." Which is understandable, <laughs> but you would still play it with me because you had fun playing with me, and that's that's the aspect of that. I- because there is nothing funner than team teabagging somebody that is awesome when yeah. you kill a dude and 16 other guys run over to the corpse and teabag them all at the same time that is wonderfully hysterical or or just one of us starts and every and then you like i'm like come over and do it with me and you do it and then everyone and like people we don't even know uh, join us you know yeah like or if you're a girl you're v-bagging them which is yes. always good yeah. and then of course i got you into you know and shout out to battlefield friends Oh yeah, Battlefield Friends was amazing. Yeah, I got you into that, and you're like, I mean, there's there wasn't a game that we would play that you wouldn't go, you know, that you do the chicken song and yeah, I got little birdie legs, birdie legs, birdie legs. <laughs> that you game- know, I, I will say though, going back to it, it's not just video games though, because my very first incident of nerd rage was Monopoly. I could see that. Like I was playing Monopoly, I was like ten years old. I'm playing Monopoly, it's family game night, and I'm having a good time, and I'm losing, and you know I'm getting my ass kicked, and then I just like fl- I literally flip the table, you know, fucking pieces go everywhere. I was like, yeah, fuck you and fuck Boardwalk, and like I got grounded for like three weeks for my dad. Fuck you and fuck Boardwalk. <laughs> you flipped the table. You pretty much pulled that like fat kid playing uh, uh, Magic. Oh, Magic. Oh, that's such a great video. Well, that guy. I mean, that guy's a comedian, but he he does it so well. He does nerd rage so well because that. I mean, that is really the story. Nerd rage for me is there. There's an appropriate level of nerd rage. You there's know, an inappropriate. Level. And then there's an inappropriate level of nerd rage. And I even have a friend who has an inappropriate level of nerd rage. Yeah, I believe you know? it. You know, I have a friend of mine who literally you cannot play a video game with him because he's just literally screaming obscenities the whole time, and he kind of kills the ass. Like, look, like there, like your appropriate level of nerd rage should be like where it's almost comical. Like when you're, like you, like you said earlier, Wild, when you're when you're not having nerd rage and you, you're hearing somebody nerd rage and you're kind of chuckling along with them, and yeah. they're at their core, they're kind of chuckling at themselves. And then there's inappropriate nerd rage where, like, like, like inappropriate nerd rage. Like one of my buddies went on a date the other day, and he found out, like, like Samus. That he that 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 this girl he's he went on a date with has never seen Star Wars. He literally said "fuck you" and "fuck your family" and like left the date. I have never in the history of my life about to smash some pussy and then be like, she'd be like, "By the way, I've never seen Star Wars." That does not stop me from fucking her. I I don't hate people for not loving the things that I love. I don't nerd rage that hard no. where I, where I think you're. Where I think you're a piece of shit if you don't like – like me and Samus. Samus loves the vision. I hate the vision. But I don't actually begrudge her in any way and I, I, I wouldn't like take her on a date or something. You know, It's like no, that, that's not my level of nerd rage. I just we, – we just fundamentally disagree on fucking – on a video game. I've had people come out and uh, chase me throughout the entire map of the game trying to kill me for like 20 minutes. That's a good Because I pissed one. them off so bad. How yeah. you piss them off? Expl- tell us from the beginning killing them over and over again you just like run into people and uh like accidentally we've done that yeah well because there's a lot of people playing the game and uh end up killing them because why not (laughs) it's hilarious because some of the people like do the same thing over and over again thinking they'll get a different result good example there was a time when i was i was going from building to building in battlefield and i believe sunrise was with me i think you might have been with me as well gambit and there's there's a squad that kept coming into this building trying not trying to clear it out but they're trying to use that building for cover to to get to the uh to the base to the one of the the objectives 
And we just kept killing them and killing them. And they kept coming and coming and coming. And this is one of those situations where I know they'd get pissed because we would teabag the fuck out of them. And it did at one point they just it stopped becoming like, oh, yeah, we're going to clear this house house out. It was more like, oh, we're going to find these guys and kill them because fuck them. <laughs> were you with us, Gambit? Yeah, I remember I remember that one because we were in that basement level. We were on an A or B. Or no, we were at B. Yeah. And like, yeah, it was that basement level. We had all three of the, uh, the entrance covered. And see, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's strategic. We had all three of the entrances covered and we were just raping people. I mean, literally just sticking my M16 up their butthole and just firing to my heart's content. Like, that's... <laughs> They were just and dumbly doing it, coming back for more. And they, yeah, and that's and that's the thing. Like that nerd rage, that's your own stupidity. Like instead of coming down the stairwell where you know I'm fucking him, why not like fucking drop down the fucking uh, the ceiling and take me out from behind or like go another me. direction and try and yeah. kill someone else, you know? Yeah, or just try to get your KDR up, or maybe maybe or maybe if you really want to go cheap with it, grab a plane and fucking dive bomb the plane in there and, and clear it out, or throw a C4 down there and just be like bada boom, bitch. C4, yeah, there you go, Salmon. No, C4 is the most hated. I have touched so I've, much. I've done some funny shit with C4 before, but I wasn't like, I'm not the guy that like, I'm going to put it on the walls and let someone walk through. That was always, that was always Sunrise. He was always bad about that. And it, That's it, what always happens to me. You're the, you're the sucker that goes through the walls and everything blows up? Yeah, actually, uh, playing Conquest on Battlefield 3, uh, you know the map Operation Firestorm? Oh, of course. How they have that, uh, I think it's B, right in the middle of those two buildings that are across from each other. Mm-hmm. Been playing Conquest before, and these people could not get the objectives. So they just like abandoned the whole game and just started attacking that objective, trying to <laughs> kill whoever they could because everybody kept murdering them. To the point where they started uh, putting C4 on the helicopters and just like jumping out and blowing them up, trying to kill anybody that they could. <laughs> that, they're so that, pissed off that's hilarious and that's what brings about my nerd rage my nerd rage is basically brought about by people who don't play the objective i'm if it's an objective based game i'm all for it so like snipers like you for playing battlefield 4 and someone's just sniping not really helping anyone just trying to get their kdr up i'm like fuck dude so then in this and i know gambit gambit's gonna laugh at this because there was a few times that we found a few snipers in in battlefield four and you know what i'm talking about right gambit oh yeah oh yeah i remember this we, and i taught i taught him to do this i would go fuck this guy and he'd be in our group so i'd just start shooting in the air <laughs> to give his position away right <laughs> you know, and gambit starts doing it too he's like why are we doing this i'm gonna look at the map people are seeing where he's at and all of a sudden there's like four squads just coming at him okay gambit run <laughs> <laughs> Or he would move and we'd go to where he moved and fucking do it some more. I will say that I I know when I successfully nerd rage somebody else, when I really piss somebody else off, is when the match is all said and done and all of a sudden I get, ding, you yep. have a new message from. <laughs> and it's like, you faggot, you little fucking faggot. And when I get those messages, I will say it just lightens my soul. Like my inner troll comes out. I'm just like, yes, yes. <laughs> and that's – and you know what was bad about that was Maximus. Uh is, is Maximus was super bad about that. Okay. Anyway, so Maximus, Maximus was really bad about that. He would, he would. We had a server in Battlefield Three, and we, I guess, we were the third server in the world. I didn't even realize until uh, we looked it up. He, Maximus, was bad. He'd play teabag and just piss people off, and he would get all sorts of messages. And Maximus is like <laughs> default response to anyone, like fuck you, you're a fucking asshole. Like, you know, messaging him, his default response was always the same. Fuck your mother. And it, we'd be playing, he'd just, he's like, oh, someone just fucking messaged me. Fuck your mother. And that's how he'd say it to us. <laughs> I'd play, when I played Battlefield 3, when we had the server, there was a, a map or two where, I, and I liked using the Stinger, which is the, um, the anti-air missile that locks on and it's pretty much difficult to get rid of. There's, there was this one guy that kept trying to fly a, a group of people in and I kept shooting him out of the sky and Max was with me and he would help and Sunrise would give us more ammunition. And next thing I know, I get a message and he go, I get a message going, motherfucker, you're a fucking idiot. Why do you fuck? Well, you're a fucking noob, you little kid. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, I was like 29. I'm like, fuck, dude, come on. A little kid, really? Samus, give us another story. Tell us some more about what what makes you rage. What makes you rage? When I get killed over and over and over okay. again. Yeah, it's okay. It it's makes me bad. so mad. When's the last time you raged? A couple days ago. Tell us that story. There's just a, a team that uh, we run into every now and then on Division. And they're always multi-grouping, which is something that really pisses me off. Mm-hmm. 
So there's like eight people on two or something like that. And the whole time they're just talking shit. They're like, you guys are trash. You guys can't play this game for shit. But of course, if there's eight people on two people, you're going to lose. You're going to die no matter what. So they're like elitist little queer boys. Yeah, exactly. And they're uh, just using like little tricks to be able to heal like four times. Just dumb stuff like that. So I feel okay as long as I can get at least like one of them. But when you die over and over and over again, it drives me crazy. I will say that another game that really made me rage unnecessarily was Destiny. Oh God! Destiny got my rage so much, but again, it's one of those games. That I, it's 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 why I hate the division because it's just one of those other games that's so fucking stupid. It's all about accessorizing. It's our destiny. We're here. We're awoken, and we're outspoken. Like no, fuck that game. That was horribly gay, and I love it. <laughs> we're that's here. We're I- awoken, and we're outspoken. Is that from the game? <laughs> No, that's from a uh, that's from my web <laughs> a web uh, cartoon. I will send you. It's okay. I will post up on our on our, on our on our Facebook page. It's fucking hilarious. But no, it's it's one of those things where I can't stand. Where like another one that I can't stand is when people talk shit on my own team. There's two rages to this. Okay, if you are playing any game that has a competitive uh, option, so like Call of Duty is my that's my jam. You know, if you're playing hardcore. And you don't have a mic, fuck everything about you. Literally, le- legitimately, fuck your soul, fuck your life. I hope you all get fucking Parkinson's disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, and butt cancer. Like, butt cancer? <laughs> okay. Like, I hate you. I fucking hate you. Have a mic. These games are competitive military based games where communication is key and if i can't talk to you you're a piece of shit now to your defense if you don't get on your mic because a you're tired of and this kind of parts into my nerd rage if you're getting on the, if you don't want to get on the mic because your own team unnecessarily talk shit like that 13 year old boy who just likes to scream the n-word at you yeah. 17 times like you like i've never wished i had force powers more in my life than when when i first got on xbox 360 and these kids were just talking shit and like yeah look i talk shit i talk shit with the best of them but the difference between me talking shit online and me talking the same in person is no difference well, the I thing will, is, is they they say the same thing over and over again. That's the thing. It's well, know, and they just scary. scream, yeah, and they scream over you. They talk over you. The thing about it is, is I had a YouTube video. I think it got pulled down because it is that old. Uh, but I had a video of me competitively playing Call of Duty and talking shit to the other team to their face, and I got into a fist fight at the video game tournament. Damn it! You know, I so for me, I will talk shit. So like for me, if you don't have the ball. Or the testicular fortitude to talk the same way you do online, don't do it. Now, there is a bit of, you know, there's a psychological aspect of it. You can get really, like, in-depth with it. You can go, well, the anonymity of online users and the online gaming and yada, yada, yada and all that other stuff. The Fine, whatever. But have a mic and speak normally. Like, look, just let's, let's have fun. And on top of that, that goes in with my other nerd rage is something that just drives me crazy and we talk about all the time is when a girl jumps on. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm a pervert for real. Yeah, don't be a desperate bitch. Like, here's a general rule of thumb for me. If a girl has a sexy porn star voice online, she's probably a fat cow. Like, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> like, that's – that's generally what I've experienced in my life, so I don't it doesn't care. Doesn't matter. I I don't think it matters if she's a fat cow or not. I think I, if it's a girl, it's a girl. She's playing games. She can kick ass with the best of them. That's that, that that's my thing. Like for me, I want to play the game. Like again, now, like again, so I would play and I would meet people and I would talk shit, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, there's friendly banter while you're playing a video game because that's the whole point, right? As long the whole point, friendly banter when it gets right, right, right. Like, it's like when it, like if we're squatted up with four people. Uh, then another four people join our game on Call of Duty, and one of them happens to be a chicken. She's like, "Hi guys!" It's like, "Oh babe, hey!" Da, da, da. And suddenly you stop, you stop focusing on the game, and your KDR goes down, and we're losing because you're trying to hit on this girl. It's like, dude, focus up, man! Like focus, like focus, like go go to the bathroom, rub one out, come back and play this video game. Because like I've never started a relationship ever through playing online. Yeah, I have had some girls send me some tit pics. And yeah. to those women, I will say thank you. We salute you. I love you. You're awesome. You know, I, I definitely love that shit. Like, don't, and again, I'm a pervert. Like, so well, I'm we gonna, like we like the attention. The attention's nice. The attention is nice. And don't get me wrong. Like I said, I'm a pervert. So, but that's the thing is, here's my thing. If I like you, 
I talk shit to you. If you have become one of my people, I'm rude, I'm crass, I'm way overly sexual, I'm overly perverted. You know that. You and feel that, comfortable. I feel comfortable, and, and then I can be comfortable with that person. If I don't like you, I'm quiet as a church mouse, which is hard to believe that that I would ever be quiet. But yeah, I, I've been playing games with people, and they proved to be a douchebag, and it sends my nerd rage flying. And instead of ranting at them and screaming at them, I'll just go quiet. I'll go monk on their ass and just not talk to them. And they're like, Gamby, you're being real quiet. What's going on? The girl gets in the room and you can't talk? No, I won't play the fucking game, and your thirsty ass is getting us to get killed. Well, how about this, man? Uh, it's funny that you bring up the fact that, you know, girls get get hit on all the time because I know Samus has had that problem. I've had that problem a lot. I don't even use my mic anymore half the time when I play. See, and that's what causes my nerd rage is now here you have a girl who's willing to talk online who literally does not want to talk anymore because she gets hits on. Now, and honestly, I kind of – and I kind of like – I understand why, Samus, you would get quiet. And I get why you wouldn't want to use your mic, but I respect the women more that I just get online and like, then like the guys are like, they're hit on them and they're like, look, look, I'll date you if you can get your KDR up. That was one of the best responses I've ever heard from a girl. Oh, and I like that. And the guy got real serious. And then he went on like, a, he went, the guy got serious. It was one of my buddies and he went 35 and two. And he was like, so what about that date now? And she's like, eh, I don't date guys who are thirsty. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Damn. It was so good. So, like, I think if you have thick skin about it and you talk, like, and that's the point is, like, look, even if you don't use your mic, at least turn on your headset so at least you can be, like, heard. Or just go to a private party where you feel more comfortable and talk to the guys that you feel more comfortable. That's cool, too. Yeah. You know? Example, if you ever had anyone play with you and just stop what they're doing to PM you, Samus? Yeah, I've had that happen. Like, I've used my... What kind of stuff do they say? Like, give me a female aspect of look outlook on this. I'm curious. Usually if I have my headset or if somebody finds out that I'm a girl, because I do play with people who know that I'm a girl and who I actually talk to on a on the mic. Yeah. Uh, their first reaction is, oh, she's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> like that deep kind of like rapey voice thing going on. <laughs> <A rapey> voice. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly how it is. Oh, she's oh. a girl. Oh. And then uh, she's a girl. Yeah, exactly. Then they'll just like they'll follow me around like a little puppy dog. Like Aww. when we're playing the game, they'll play special like pay special attention to me, make sure I don't die. Like nerds. sacrifice themselves for me. Gamers, the nerds, game. people, lend me your ears. Stop this shit. Stop yes. that. That's what that's what stereotypes are made of. It's so bad. It's just, it's horrible. And then also what I don't like about it is if you're like in game chat and you're talking, someone knows that you're a girl, all of a sudden they want to be cool with you. They won't shoot you. They don't want to fight you <laughs> just because you're a girl. I will say me and, this one, me and this one girl got to be friends because we were playing Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and she raped me. And I mean, she raped me. Like, like fist. Like fist and no loop. She didn't have the decency to even spit on it. Like oh. she just. So the next game, I was like, I'm gonna hunt this bitch, and I did. And I hunted her down. I beat her the next game. Then we beat. And then she PM me, which was really weird because I've never got a private message from a girl, which was awesome. And she was like, she was like, good plan. You wanna you wanna link up and like and and fucking run this shit. I was like, hell yeah. So I get online. We we hook up and then we start playing and then she became part of our guild and our squad and all that other stuff and it was it was awesome she was fucking great she was a great addition to it and everything and that yeah that is the point like if a girl gets on there I will just play her especially if she's good I'll play her twice as hard and honestly if she dies fuck her she's dead now I'm gonna go over a teabag or <laughs> she's on my team yeah it's not like, that's it's not it's no there should be no difference you shouldn't just because she's a girl do you get any do you get any graphic P, uh, like PMs or like it, like dick pics sent your way I haven't gotten any dick pics yet she's I have pick. gotten. <laughs> I've gotten so many messages, just like creepy stuff, weird like stuff. What? Asking like, for my, give me ex I gotta hear this. Asking for my phone number, asking if I can send them a picture of my tits, just stuff like that. See, I don't, I don't yeah. get that. I, I'm, I don't, I don't get guys who are like, send me a picture of your boobs. I'm like, send me a picture of your ass in a thong. <laughs> Make it clap Same for me. <laughs> Make it clap, <laughs> twerk, 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 twerk. Like oh, that's. Oh, God. <laughs> I actually, a long, long time ago, when I was playing Left 4 Dead 2, one of the guys on my team sent me a message and asked me if I wanted to have uh, mic sex with him while we were playing the game. <laughs> that's well, a new, that's, I, you know, in a way, I'm kind of proud of this guy. Cause, did like, I just give you an idea? <laughs> well, n well, not really, because no, what I'm proud about is like most video games, it takes two hands to play. So like Especially my thing is that like, game. 
Yeah, especially that game. So I'm like sitting there going, is he jerking off with his feet? Like, <laughs> this guy is this guy's ne- on some next level shit. Like, he's real sensitive. He like, like looks at the <laughs> stick and like, oh god. That nerd rages me so hard is when like, just I don't know. It just it just it just does. Like video games, it, it, it's time to play video games. Like it, when it's time to get down with the ladies, it's time to get down with the ladies. And when it's video games, it's video games. And, I'm, and like I said, like I've, I said it many, 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 many times, I'll make perverted jokes all the time. There's nothing wrong with that in, in friendly banter. And if something comes of it, then great. And if something doesn't come from it, that's great too. You know, I got my left hand and she treats me very well. No, and the, you know, the, the other thing that pisses me off about the mic, it, it really is those kids, man. Those kids just nerd rage me so hard. Well, what about the ones that keep their mic on and they have music playing in the fucking background, dude? Uh, you know, the music doesn't bother me so much. It's the people who forget their mic is on yeah and have conversations with other people oh yeah like with their mom and shit yeah yeah oh yeah. Yeah, and you're trying to play and you're like mijo mijo and you're like what the <laughs> fuck dude turn your shit off like no there was once and i'll never forget this because my clan leader wanted to punish the dude i mean it was pissing us off but it was very comical and that was him and his ex-wife and i say ex because they eventually got divorced started fighting over how much he plays video games and at one point she called in his um ability to perform oh, in the bedroom no. <laughs> and she was like you know if, if i dress as a call of duty soldier maybe your dick would get hard for me oh. and i was we at the time like 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 look at, at first it was a, it was an annoyance because like dude you're fighting with your wife like turn off the video game Go take care of your house situation, you know. Stop being a noob. But when that line came out, I could not stop laughing. I was just, I was laughing so hard. I, it was so good to hear this guy's life fall apart just for, for a video game. I hate the babies, like in the background, like kids screaming oh, while yeah. you're trying to play a game. That gets on my nerves too. You'll be playing in your. And you're like, dude, take care of your fucking kid. Like, be a yeah. responsible fucking parent, man. That kid is hungry. Yeah. The kid's probably got a full diaper. Go take care of that. <laughs> yeah, and I, I agree with that. Like, background sounds in a video game, like, if they're louder than the person. If you're playing a game and there's a shit ton of feedback. Uh, feedback never bothers me because that's just, like, mic issues. And if some, sometimes people can't help that. Like, I don't really get too mad about that. I will say that, like, I wish that people were more tech savvy with their with their equipment so they could fix stuff like that. But uh, if somebody's trying, like, oh, dude, my mic's fucking up. Like, let me let me, let me adjust some shit. Let me yeah. speak with this. Like, I'll, I'll forgive them a little bit, you know, for that. It really is just the background noises and stuff like that. It's like, dude, if you've got a – like, I understand if you've got a life, maybe, maybe your wife's taking care of the kids. And this is your like two hours to play because you got it set up with your wife that this is when you can play or whatever. Like that's fine and everything, but that's why you know get a headset where you got a uh, you know like the mute button that's right on top of the cord so you can mute it. Yeah. And then when you want to talk, you can unmute it. Like get good with your shit. You know, get 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 tech savvy. Learn your shit. Learn your you learn your process. Like that that pisses me off too. Like to no end. You know, it's, it's bad when like you hear someone's fucking dirty laundry being just aired. <laughs> Everyone gets to hear. You know. Maybe if I dressed up as a soldier, you'd get your dick hard. And that, that's just that's just horrible. That's you know, I bet you that guy felt like killing himself afterwards. Probably not. I mean, as soon as he, I remember the guy when he got his divorce from his wife, he was like, I'm so happy because now I can just play video games all the time. And I'm like, dude, you gave up video games for pussy. Like, like, don't get me wrong. Like, there are times when, like, I will pause my relationships with girls, like when Fallout 4 came out. Like, I'll never forget, I, I, I was dating this girl, and we were seeing each other and whatnot, and I was like, look, Fallout 4 comes out tomorrow, I'm taking a three-day weekend from work, I'm just going to play Fallout. Like, if yeah. you want to come see me, cool, but don't come over expecting attention, don't come over expecting anything, I'm going to play Fallout 4, I've been waiting fucking, like, seven years for this game to come out, you know, and I'm going to binge play it for a, a first couple of days and get it out of my system. At least you wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I warn her, and then like a week goes by, and this is what this is another one of my nerd rages. Is like when I warn you, especially when I'm in a relationship with you, like, look, this is my nerd things. I get nerdly excited about this. Like, I will wait in line for 24 hours for a new comic book or a new video game or a new book. You know, like this that's is my- this is where I think it's a good idea to date someone that has the same kind of outlook on on nerdy things as you do. You know what I mean? Like, right. where it's like, oh yeah, she's just as excited for Fallout to come out. She can't wait to watch me play or play with me, or I can watch her play, or we can take turns. Like I, I I I failed I failed sharing class in kindergarten like I don't share <laughs> like that's not my thing but no so like so this girl so she, she so like a week goes by right yeah. my three day weekend goes by 
And every night I get off work and I go home and I, I'm playing Fallout. And then a week goes by and she calls me. She's like, look, you haven't given me any attention in a week. What's going on? I was like, look, this new game came out. I told you I'm back at work now. My next day off isn't until fucking like three days from now, whatever, whatever, whatever. She's like, well, what do you want to do on your day off? And I was like, I want to play fucking Fallout. And she's like, well, I really want to see you. And I was like, well, tough shit. She's like, I've been waiting. <laughs> and she was like, well, I've been waiting a week for you. I was like, bitch, I've been waiting seven years for this game. Like and then eventually we broke up over Fallout and I don't think I I'm not I'm not mad about it at all because you can you say know, that you had a fallout or a falling out over that I'm dumb. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> but no. So like I like, I understand like losing girls over video games, but there's a certain like level of like again that's not my wife. Okay, so you're playing a game and someone gets on their mic and you just hear like extreme heavy breathing, I've like they're about to have a heart attack. Like they're playing and they're. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like yeah. that, right? Yeah, just like the real deep, like. <sighs> it sounds like you're like 500 pounds. Yeah, that's okay, yeah. exactly work. It's like. like... <sighs> and they're, they're like, they're, they kill someone and then the breathing stops for a minute. Like, did they finally die? They got <laughs> real excited, so they stopped breathing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then and then you hear it again. <sighs> I've never, I've never, I've never caught a breather, so I can't nerve rage on breathers. I've, I I used to hear it on like Battlefield a lot. It's I I will say I've caught what I don't like is people who get sex like like when when like when people are getting like head or like like actually having sex while playing video games. Was really? that? I've done that. <laughs> Like, okay, but do you mute your mic or is it like... No, nah, dude, I want like the wolf dick. to hear it. <laughs> Bro, that's an achievement. I think, I think, I think like any, like an Xbox or the PS4 should have an achievement. Blowjob during game achievement. You should get that. <laughs> you know, like I, it, it's a, it turns into a game within a game. Like try not to make sounds. Try not to make too much sounds. Yeah, but that's, that's my point. You're at least polite enough to not make sense. Like, I literally play with a dude who was like, yeah, girl, suck that dick. You like that in your mouth? And I'm like, are you talking to me? And he's like, he's like, he was, he's like, he's like, damn it. Just don't talk, man. You're ruining my heart on it. And I'm like, no, we're playing yeah, a video cool. game. Fucking pause your shit, man. I would like, make it awkward. I would have been like, yeah, talk dirty to me, dude. Keep telling, <laughs> keep calling dude. me girl. I like that dude. <laughs> Let me stick my dick up your ass, dude. And it's just like, ah, dude, damn it. It's like, no, no, no. You came on here with explicit intent to show the world that you're a voyeur. Like your like bait session is thing, though. You know, I think it is. And that, that that pisses me off, like to a certain degree. Like I'm having a moment because I think now what if the breathers were getting blowjobs? No, they're just fat and old. No, that's actually a good. That's a good thing. What if the breathers are getting a blowjob? Like, good for yeah, them. that's but, that's what I'm thinking about. Maybe I, think, I just didn't know. I think it's better if. I now you'll never, now you'll never not hear that. You're like that, and that's what you should flip on the script, Samish. You should Man. be like, some guy's like, uh, uh, and you're like, tell that girl to suck that dick. Tell that girl to suck that dick. <laughs> tell her to put a pinky in your butthole. <laughs> you know, but no, I, I'd rather think that they're dying. Like I'd rather think that they're dying in real life. I think that would be that's just more. I hate to say it like this, but it sounds more entertaining to me. Like like every breath could be their last one. <laughs> <laughs> that's so bad uh, you know and i've actually said that with some of them i'm like are you dead yet <laughs> you know <laughs> it's just they get quiet and they'd mute the mic or something or and then later on i just, <laughs> <laughs> okay darth vader that's enough you know that we talked about our nerd rages and whatever your nerdness is whether it be comic books a new movie a video game don't let your nerd rage Ruin the experience for everybody else. Or yourself. I've had people who it's so bad that I don't want to play video games with these guys anymore. Like, I'm just like, look, I don't want to hear 40 minutes of a dude screaming, relax, it's a fucking video game. Here, tell you what, take this Adax, I'll get you a hooker, she'll blow you while you play video games, you can become a breather. And that's, I would much rather take a breather over somebody who's screaming. Even if you think a guy is hacking or cheating, look, there's nothing you can do about hacking and cheating. There's not. There's no point. Well, you getting, can. You can go to another server, but even but then. There's, but, the, but there's no point in getting so mad about it that it ruins your experience. Like, you're letting people affect you so negatively. Like, nerd rage is all well and fun, and we can all laugh about it to a certain degree. But there is a point when it gets to the point where it's just like, okay, dude, enough's enough. You're not getting paid for it. That's another thing. If you're not getting paid 
to play this video game if you're not a twitch account if you're not a competitive gamer like yeah if you were playing something like fucking uh league of legends it was life or death and you're like you're in in first place and you lost first place and went to second place i'd understand that yeah like if you're if you're playing league of legends and fucking you're playing for fucking 12 million dollars yeah have some nerd rage but if you're not if you're not if you're not at that level who cares just see it it's a game you have fun yeah I, i rage too and sometimes i'm tempted to turn it off but instead, you know, hey, I'm here to have fun. So I'm like, hey, you know what? I'll just find another server. I'll find, I'll go from there. And that's that's generally what we do. And it's fun. You know, we have fun. And sometimes, worst case scenario, if we get tired of that game, what do we do? We change games. We go to another game. That's the beauty about video games. You guys got anything else you want to say? Don't no. let the hatred flow through you. <laughs> Gambit's the one with all the hatred, clearly. Clearly. What? The hatred, I, the hatred I don't... for two games that we mentioned. Yeah. You can eat a fat, fat dick. <laughs> See, that's the hatred I'm talking about. There right it is. There. There's the nerd rage. At the end of this podcast, we'll have a, a special, a really special interview with a good friend of mine who's uh, rather known on Newgrounds and actually a rather big uh, audio sensation on YouTube. His name's uh, F777, also known as Jesse Valentine. So uh, stay tuned for that, everyone. I'm Jesse Valentine's biggest fan. I love him so much, he's such a man. But I love you, Jesse. F777. Oh, Jesse Valentine likes to write. To As we promised, I said we'd have an interview with my good friend F777, also Jesse Valentine. Uh, with me still is, is Gambit. Say hello, Gambit. What's going on, guys? And also, uh, here he is, the man himself, F777. Hey, hey guys, what's up? How you doing, buddy? Uh, doing pretty good. Uh, <laughs> huh. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to say, what are you, like a I six- can't do any voices. I was You're like a six-pack-a-day can- smoker, as it sounds like. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm chewing on some class right now. Me. F777, I'm glad that you're here. You do have a tedious name. Uh... So I want to call seven. you Jesse. I'm just gonna call you trip. I'm just gonna call you Trip Seven. Like that's sure. cool with me. Yeah. Uh, I will just call you Jesse because you know uh, we are good friends. We've known each other for a, a long time. We've done. We we've kind of done music together. Wait. Kind, oh. Kind of. Kind of. A lot. <laughs> uh, I know that. I know. I know that the listeners are gonna wanna wanna hear some questions. So uh, I'll I'll go ahead and start with Gambit. Gambit, you can ask the questions first. Yeah, so uh, basic questions for, for for listeners who don't know you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a little a little credit here. Um, the first song I listened to you was uh, Celtic Dance Machine. Uh, 460K views. That's awesome, man, on, on, on YouTube. That's amazing. Um, so so the first question is, what is your style of music, uh, those out there that don't listen or haven't heard you yet? Well, yeah, thanks so much, dude. Um I don't. I've always just labeled things as dance, you know. And some people be like, "Oh, this is dubstep. This is trance." But if I actually label it that, people always go, "Well, it's not quite dubstep. It's not quite trance." So I don't know. I just say EDM. <laughs> I mean, we get an overarching umbrella you and say that you would, uh, you would say that yours is techno. Then techno. No, nah, I mean, Ludicrous Speed would definitely have a lot of techno in it. Like mostly, it's techno. I would, I would consider that techno. Kind of like Dim Rain, or those old school beats, you know, like from way back that's kind of just past disco era i guess so i've done i've done some techno in my stuff but um uh, i don't know i think when i mix the real the real instruments and stuff like that i kind of go more to just electro and that's kind of a, dubstepy I'd stuff i'd say trance dance slash with a little bit yeah of, I, would, I would i would say yeah celtic celtic dance is definitely is, is in my in my opinion is is definitely like i would say house and then the viking uh dance is, is definitely more dubstep quality. but you do put those real violins in there which is a nice touch you know i i, I like i said i like it a lot yeah, I, I just love the violins. Like me and Wildfire way back, everything we had, we just add violins after. Oh, this needs a violin. This needs a violin. <laughs> cello, cello, yeah. All it's sorts kind of the magic. So, <laughs> so to go, like you said, this is uh, this is your first interview, right? This is uh, your first speaking appearance, as it were. Yeah, I mean, I've answered some email questions before, like an interview style, but I've never actually had a recorded audio interview. Well, so let's do this again. Let's thank some- you for that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, again, thank you. I mean, I'm sure everybody listen to my voice after. I'm gonna be like, oh man. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm 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 not gonna lie, dude. I'm 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 fairly impressed, man. Any anytime I I get, I get to interview anybody over 500 views, 
500,000 views is, is, is a very big deal. You know, you should be definitely proud of that. Um, what would you say is you, your inspiration for music and what inspired you to start making music? Uh, number one would definitely be the Chrono Trigger soundtrack. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with it. But I'm right I there just, with you on that. Since, since I was a kid and I played, I have not stopped listening to it. And it's actually what made me kind of go, how do people make music like this for games? Because I used to just play piano. I had no idea you could get a program on the computer or anything like that. So... I would say that is definitely my number one inspiration. Um, these days, for the electronic side of it, I would say Savant. I don't know, or mm-hmm. yeah, I guess that's how he says it. You guys, have you guys ever heard of Savant? Yes. Love that dude. Like yeah. I can't stop listening to his stuff. Yeah, I mean, because it was cool because he kind of has the background of orchestra as well, and then he really brought a lot of chip tune, chip tune stuff. And I liked his music because he just breaks all the rules. And I remember when I was doing in the new ground days, everyone's telling me, oh, I shouldn't do this or, Oh, F triple seven, the cheesy sounds. And I just kind of goes, ah, screw it. I like it this way. And I think he's one of the other musicians who does that, that he was doing really well these days. He's just awesome. Again, you know, again, to throw out your accolades out there, 137,000 subscribers can't be wrong and say that you got bad music, you know? So you definitely make music that speaks to a lot of people out there. Um, you know, you get a lot uh, of thanks. views, a lot of hits. I like it a lot. Like I said, I could definitely when I listen to your when I listen to again Viking Dance because, like I said, I, I, I'm just now getting introduced to your music. Um, I, that's that's the music. That's the kind of music that I can throw on when I go to the gym and I work out. Mm-hmm. You know, that's as funny as um, I go to the gym all the time and I have a hard time finding music that I don't know that feels right for working out. That's still EDM. Yeah, if that makes sense. So I try I try to make my music always to be fun for the most part where it makes you want to go do something because i don't have you know obviously i don't use a lot of singers or anything like that so <laughs> yeah and you know i when i'm in a good mood making music i'm being goofy anyway so i just like the upbeat stuff and oh, yeah. being super cheesy overdoing things you know <laughs> so what would you say is your, like your favorite music to make right now glitch hop for some reason i just <laughs> feel like there's so many ways you can just do a different song i don't know it, I, maybe just because that's the phase I'm in right now, but the, the phase. So do you like do you draw inspiration from like you said phases? Do, I mean, do you have like you listen to an artist and that kind of influences you to to do something else, or is it just whatever? Like you might stumble onto a new beat or a, a new sound and just be like, yeah, I'm gonna tinker with that a little bit. Oh yeah, actually, I, I guess because when I made Celtic Dance Machine or Celtic, however people want to say it. At the time, I was listening to a lot of Irish music and stuff, and I was just loving it. And then as, next thing I knew, I was opening FL Studio, and I was like got three three ideas for different songs and so i was like okay i'm gonna do this and i used to do an album a month for a while that one i did in a month so that was the mood i was in that month a lot of people ask me to make chinese dance machine volume two and i'm just now making it it's been how long because i haven't had the same craze for it until just recently so speaking of you know you, you mentioned you mentioned fl uh i'm sure that's a lot of question you get all the time how do you make your music you know blah 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 how, how how do you make your music how do you make it sound so good why don't you answer that question once and for all for the the listeners <laughs> what program do you use pretty much i i use apple studio i still use apple studio 10 because i'm i'm just weird that way uh nothing wrong with 10 i, I liked 10 when it came out i i always say though like if i show my music to the average person they like it if i show my music to other musicians they cringe they're like, oh no, what did you do there? <laughs> so I don't know. I don't want to say it's good, but I try to make it enjoyable, you know? Yeah. Like if I, if I don't want to listen to it myself, then I just throw in the garbage. I don't keep working on it. Well, if it's not fun, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Like if you don't find it fun while you're working on it, it's just meh. You and I have had several, probably will never be known uh, projects that were like, nah, nah, we're done with this. Yeah. Go ahead. It, when you, it's funny. It's funny you said that. You, you said you show people your music. You're gonna pop somebody's cherry with your music. What is the song that you'd want them to listen? To? Like, what is the song that you're most proud of? What's the one you like? This is my music. This represents what I do. Well, it really depends on the person. I think uh, most kids under 15, I would show them Monster Dance Off because trap has just exploded. I would say for anyone above that age, maybe like something like the Seven Seas or. Um, there's just so many songs I've made. It's so hard to pick pick one, you know. Sometimes you sometimes you pick one. You're like, oh, this song's so cool, and everyone else is like, meh. And then <laughs> maybe so. Phantom. Well, I mean, oh, yeah, Phantom. I've been showing all my friends Phantom right now. I'm like, oh, I made this way back. 
Uh, no, Wildfire One way back we used to make this stuff, and we were trying to make it for Halloween. Of course, we posted it in January. And of course, all my friends laughed. That's so me, but no, well, I, 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 think, I, I think that's like any. I think that's like any artist's thing, you know. Like you may absolutely love like track seven on your album, but everybody else is like, no, three is your best work. And I like, I like, I got like picking an artist's brain to like hear like what do you love more because that's that's when you really get into the heart of like somebody's music and you can really listen yeah. to them. It's not, it's not their like, sometimes their biggest hit, but the one that means a lot to them. So. It was funny is because I mixed my albums. I got into the habit of um, I make guesses with with my wife, and it'd be like, "This one's my favorite, but this one's probably the one that's going to be like all over the internet and blah blah blah." Yeah, and, you um, never know which one blows up. It's 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 crazy. Yeah, and, and I'm still wrong a lot of the time, but I think slowly I'm starting to get a little more accurate. It's figuring out what's going to be the good song to you know spend your ad money on to introduce people. Whereas your favorite one, maybe it's a lost cause. You should just put it up and let people listen if they want, you know. <laughs> Have you ever had any crazed fans, like anyone send you panties or anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Oh, I had a bad one. Oh, really no. bad one. I don't know if I could, like, say too much about no, it, but dude, basically I was getting all names, pictures. Just, yeah. Yeah, but I was getting all these pictures and stuff, and it got to the point, like, this, this chick was 19, I think, at the time. She's probably 21 now. She just acted like a 12-year-old, in a sense, like she's just sending me pictures and pictures and pictures and like I, I was deleting them. You know, I have my girlfriend. She's my wife now and stuff. And I'm like yeah. deleting her, deleting the account. She found my WeChat. She found everything, dude. She found like any way to contact me. And I kept deleting her. And then she add me with like fake accounts and fake names. And then like out of the blue, she changed the picture back to her and be like, "Hey Jesse, I'm so sorry. I'm sending this and stuff. I won't do it again. And I just miss you. And I'm sorry." And I'd be like, "Ah, okay." In the next few days, yeah, got some more pictures. Oh. But the funniest part was she disappeared out of the blue, and I got this email from her parents, and they it was an apology letter. They're like, "Oh, so sorry for our daughter. We found out she's been harassing you and doing this and that." And dude, it was unbelievable. Oh man! <laughs> so like, all my private accounts, so many messages, just I couldn't stop. I mean, that could be a downside, having fans that hard, but I mean, do you find, do you get a lot of internet trolls that, that, that just talk shit about your music? And does that affect you at all, or do you just brush it off and like, ah, oh, I don't really give a shit what, they, what people say, I make the music for me? Well, I'm actually really, really lucky, because I have the best fans in the world, like, it's insane. I'll post something, and it'll get like 5,000 likes on YouTube, and only like 12 dislikes, and then everyone's posting like 12 people looked at the video upside down, or something like that, like, it's every time. Looked at so, the I mean, video like, upside down. They listen yeah. to it backwards. <laughs> yeah. Or something. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll say a lot harsher things, too. But it's basically everyone starts hating on the few people who disliked it. And I'm sitting here like, wow, this is the ratio. Everyone's been so nice. And, of course, I I think when I was 14 to 16, I responded to some trolls. Things would actually kind of upset me. But I started realizing when you reply to someone angry, you look like – you kind of look pathetic. So I just got in the habit of, like – People would just like write this huge paragraph long hate thing, and I just reply with like a smiley face or that or a cool story, man, or something yeah, like that, or yeah. just just something funny, just so I could laugh at it. Because you can get so easily caught up on the one negative comment, which is kind of bad because then you're not appreciating the 99 that were awesome, you know, just because that one ruined your day. Yeah. And I think that's unfair to the people who are being nice. Well, you know, it's funny as I say that, and I'm, I'm scrolling through your stuff, you know, trying to be a due diligent interviewer here. One of my favorite comments, which is kind of a, which is kind of a negative, funny one, it's like the top comment on your thing. It says, I hate the ending of this song. Why? Because it exists. This song, this song should never <laughs> end. This <laughs> song should never oh, end. I know. People are so awesome, man. You know, so you got you got you 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 seem to have a, an amazing fan base. Uh, what, what do you what like with that being said? Like, and you you obviously love your fan base, which is super awesome. I, I love it when people who who put their heart and soul into music really appreciate their fans because we love our fans. We really we really do love everybody that listens to us. Yeah. Um. Uh, what would you say your fan base is? I mean, do you have a demographic a demographic for your fan base, or is it just kind of all over the world? Like, you you kind of just have a a, a general overarching fan base. It's all, yeah, and that's just funny. I think it's like um, 28% US, probably another 4% Canada or something like that. And I think it's around 8% Mexico. And then the rest of it spread out pretty evenly everywhere. This year, um, I, I've started to branch out into China. I've got my music on their Chinese Spotify, which is where I live, by the way. Yeah, uh, I would say it's kind of strange because when I started when I was 14, a lot of my fans were also 14 to 18. And they grew up with me, but it's like every year, sometimes there's a new 13-year-old who, who likes my music or like, you know, maybe a bunch of them. 
So but they keep you. listening. Like over the years, like a lot of people are growing up with me with the music, and it's really cool. So it's ages, it's ages twelve all the way up to twenty five mainly, and it's surprising to me how many forty year olds actually listen to my music, especially the Celtic dance machines and stuff. So a lot of people tell me, "Hey, our family likes to listen to your music," or "My dad doesn't like." dubstep but he says your music's really cool i guess i'm not too heavy bass or too genre specific so just in general people can like it i think i don't know well now like i just i just finished a third song because right, i'm listening to it as i'm as i'm doing the interview i think the, the most beautiful thing about your music and the thing that like really for me interests me is is and maybe why you're so universal is that there is no actual lyrics to it you know and and so because of that there's no language barrier you know, it's just good music, good sounds. Uh, like I said, I love the like in Kelly Dance Machine. I love the violin mix. I mean, that was a, a great. The Viking is my favorite personally. I think everybody should go out and listen to Viking Dance. That is much more hard, much more upbeat. I just feel like I need to ax somebody in the face. You know. <laughs> you know, and I, no, you thanks, know, man. That- that's one of my personal favorites of mine too. I would definitely recommend that for for people to listen. So yeah, so for me, like like there's no language barrier. There's 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 no there's no problems with like you know with any of that. So you just you get this great dance music and dance music is, is always great because I mean you can do it slow and you can have you can be you know something that you can relax to or something that gets you going and get your heart pumping and get your your body moving and that's always good too. So I mean, like I said, man. I, you got a great fan base. The, the comments are always kind of hilarious. I don't see too many trolls on your account. I mean, you really do have a great fan base, man. So big shout outs to all of his fans out there. You guys are amazing, you know. So yeah, seriously, thank you all, all of you. Well, I'm, I'm, one of <laughs> I'm fans blown away too. every day. I mean, I even went out of my way to write an ode to him. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. No one else has done that. <laughs> no one else has done that. And, uh, well, I mean, I've got poems. I've got poems before, but. <laughs> Well, I mean, we, we kind of had a bromance, Jesse. I mean, I think you said it too when we were talking the other day. We have a bromance going on, and, and I mean, I wrote a I, I wrote an ode to you, you know, to a to a song I think you did, and then you wrote a song for me. <laughs> a <good laughs> song. I actually have a song. Yeah. That, you know, in a way, it's titled "It's from Jesse." It says Wildfire One's theme, and I'm like, oh. Do, do, do we ever post that anywhere? No, but I, to post, I, you know, to I want that. you to. I want you to. Yeah, I'm gonna have to post that up. And it's an amazing song too. It's real beautiful. I had this other thought that was with the universal part. One thing I've never realized that I think a lot of people don't think about is your name, your DJ name or whatever name, stage name is usually in English, whereas mine, any language can say it. Like in Chinese, they go. In Chinese, they go F T T T F S U N K A T. So it's like because the seven is universal, right? Like a number, and that's like seventy-five percent of my name is a number. <laughs> I, I know, I know, you've gotten this question before. I know that I know the story because I've read it. You, and if we can get it in your own words, I think maybe people will hear it and finally stop asking this question: Why F seven seven seven? Yeah. Okay. So it's a boring story, <laughs> but when I was like eleven. Did you guys ever mess around with Pivot? It's like a stick animation program. No, I can't. I, I haven't. But I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of like the garage band of music. Like, if you use Pivot to animate, people, like, I think Newgrounds at one point was even accepting the animations. Like, it was Flash or nothing. Stop using Pivot. Yeah. But <laughs> when I was a kid, I liked using the program, just make these funny things. And I would post them on this other forum, and I call myself Fire in the Hole 777. Okay. And then people just started calling me Fire 777. Like, you know, when you reply to somebody, it takes forever to type it, so they yeah. just say that. And then I started, like, putting, like, a logo at the end of my animations, and I just go F-777. And then when I was 14, I was just like, hey, I'll just make a Newgrounds account, and I'll post uh, some music up there, because I just started. And so I went with the same name. And what's funny is I never really thought anyone was going to listen to my music <laughs> the following month china blocked new grounds uh-huh. so like i just i didn't even check new grounds for the six months and I, it was around the time i posted chinese dance machine and so i was at my friend's house at some youth group and the youth group leader he had some vpn on his computer and i was like what's this he's like oh you can access youtube and stuff i'm like oh can i try to go on new grounds i want to see if anyone listened to my song and chinese dance machine was at like a thousand downloads or something back yeah. then there wasn't listen listens it was the downloads yeah but it's like a thousand downloads and it was used in in the blast formers animation thing so people are listening it's still my most viewed song on yeah. Newgrounds, pretty sure 
maybe ludicrous speed talks. Well, it, 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 it's funny you talk about that. You know, like the the downloads, the listens. Uh, you know, on ludicrous speed on your YouTube page, you got 1.2 million views. Um, huge numbers. How did that feel the first time you broke that one million that one million listen or views? <clears throat> Like genre, how'd that how'd that feel? Like unbelievable, actually. I mean, it was probably about December 2015, and then um, uh, Rob Top contacted me to make a Geometry Dash meltdown, and so it's kind of like a smaller version of Geometry Dash, I think, to promote it all. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if he's going to make more levels for that one specifically, but he used these songs. And I'm like, yeah, okay, you can use them, and I had no idea. I was I was lucky too. Here's another thing: I was lucky. He put the link in the game, so people are like, "What's this song?" And they clicked the link straight to my YouTube, my page and everything. It, it was insane. So Pirate Dance Machine was actually the first one. I mean, that's my most viewed video now, I think. But it was the first one to break a million views. And then the next one was Viking Arena. And shortly after, Airborne Robots. I, I just couldn't believe it. And he did it again recently with another song I had, Monster Dance Off, wh- where I posted a year ago with my own with my own fan base. I got it up to around 300,000 views. But then he used it, and now it's like it. 1.3 million views or something so i mean i've done a lot of contacting people and doing a lot of stuff like this but it's just so lucky man i mean i'm just like at my computer every day like in a dream <laughs> like i don't i don't have to go work anywhere else i can keep doing this like thank you guys like it's, it's insane yeah i mean a lot of your like i said like i'm, I'm, I'm trolling through your page you know like a lot of your views are up there in the three million four million views you know um even it's funny when i when i when i first looked you up you know and, and i was getting ready for this interview you know, I, I found that a lot of people were taking your music and putting it to anime. I mean, which is, a, in my book, that's a huge, a, a huge, huge compliment when people use your 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 music to, you know, express their own uh, thoughts and feelings. Uh, do you like it when people use your music uh, and 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 splice it in with stuff? Is that like a compliment to you, or are you one of those stars who are like, hey, that's my music, don't fucking touch it? No, no, no. I love it when people can use my music in projects, but it's uh, there's been a bit of a uh, what, I don't know what to call it. So some people are a little confused right now because they'll use my music on Newgrounds. Yeah. And a lot of them haven't. A lot of them haven't asked me, but then now they're angry at me because it got flagged of content ID. Now content ID is kind of more meant for people who just upload my music, nothing else. That I don't like. Like you know, um, if I didn't put something on YouTube, there's a reason. I, just, I want on the album, and then someone else already uploaded it to YouTube just to get past it. You know. That I don't like, but if people want to dance, if people have a project or like anything like that and they need some music, I love it. So if people could just understand, if they contact me, I can give them, I can give them a special code so that um, their stuff doesn't get flagged. So now anyways, now I'm going through all the emails, replying to everyone now of codes because there's so many who are starting to understand now. But to anyone out there, if I haven't replied yet, I'm getting to you. <laughs> He's not Slowly, being but I'm getting there. He's not yeah, being no, a so, dick. He's it's just it's like the YouTube content law. You got to be careful nowadays. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like let, let's let's be perfectly clear for all the fans out there. You're not you're not out there flagging anybody. You're no, not out no, there. No. Please, you're not out there policing your music. You're not out there trying to be a dick. It really is YouTube and and Newgrounds policy. Um, and but you can give us permission. You can give us permission to use your music in any kind of mix that we want. And you like doing that kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm thinking I'm going to set up a website where it's very easy for people like that. They can go in there and submit their video that they're trying to do. And um, I can just give them an easy code because there's a lot of people, like I said, they just want to upload my song to a picture and then they're mad that they're not getting ad money from it, that I'm collecting the ad money, which is stupid because well, they didn't make the song. song so you know, yeah. yeah. And then I don't, like, because uh, I remember back then I signed up for that because someone uploaded Dance of the Violins and it was at like... 2.3 million views or something and on my channel it was only at like 80,000 and I was like oh man if that that if that was all on my channel you know like this other person was making all this money off it so that's why the system was great anyway just to clear that up for all the people out there because a lot of people have been not super angry but I think very very confused I, I mentioned well, I mentioned our earlier bromance Jesse uh I think I think we should talk about how we met do you remember <laughs> you go man no, I'm going to let you tell this story. This is your interview, bro. Man, I remember back then, you were just like the top audio review guy. Like, like you're reviewing everything. And it got to a point where you're just like reviewing everything that I was posting. Like, I posted a new thing. You were like the first review. And I was like, wow, that's that's really quick. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> yeah, we got each other on the MSN back then. MSN was awesome. It was so cool. Mm-hmm. Now, Skype, now Skype's kind of the only thing, but... 
we remember we do the voice clips and we're just yeah. like exchanging things i mean we, we were talking like every day bro like at one point every day i, I was like I think in my time zone, because you, you had the night shift and you get off work, right? Yeah, so did, my time like zone, Reeves. it was like, I'd just get on at 1, one in the afternoon. So I'd skateboard in the morning, and I, I'd do my homeschool, finish all that stuff. Skateboard in the morning, and then like 1 p.m. till 5 p.m. my time, every day I was online. And you were you usually were too. Like I remember if I wasn't online for one day or you weren't, we'd, we'd just be like, oh no, what happened? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, like are you live? Or did that for like... We did that for like years. Wasn't it like three years? It was like at three least. Or four years, dude. How long have you been doing music now? I'm approaching ten years on my birthday next month. Ten years. So so your 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 internet fame, you your your ad money as it were, just to be able to sit in front of the computer, use your words and make this uh, music. This is earned. Uh, what would you what if any kind of advice could you give your fans who are out there trying to make music and, and trying to do this? I mean, what, what advice could you give a new up and coming artist uh, to, to with their music? You mean from from the business standpoint, right? Like to get views and become big, or do you mean just for making two? Just in general, yeah, both. Let's do both. A lot of people just want to make music and they don't really like the business side, right? So you can find managers and stuff to help you, but the problem is a lot of managers, it's you know, it's like a label. Maybe it's, it'll be bad ninety percent of the time, but you might get lucky and find someone who's really good at promoting music, right? So like I remember back then, everyone was always like, "You should join Monster Cat and you should do this and blah blah blah," and um, I remember. Th- Asking one of my friends on Monster Cat, and I don't want to get sued for anything, but, you know, he had, like, three million views, and he only made, like, a couple hundred bucks is what he ended up with after. And his own channel was only getting 5,000 views on his own post. So it was, like, it was almost like your music was then promoting the label. It's not promoting you. Yeah, I didn't like that. So I want to do everything myself. And, of course, it's way slower. But if you do a gradual build and um, things like build up an email list, if you put a free album and... Uh, if when people download it, they put in their email address, and there's a box that says, "Hey, I want to sign up to the email list." You can slowly build that up. So if you got new songs, you can start updating them. Because otherwise, you're just gonna have the one thing that sucks is having a million views on a song, and you didn't really gain anything from it. It was just luck. And then after your songs are back to five thousand each, right? Yeah. So if you have some way to collect contacts and not depend on Facebook likes or s- subscribers, because the YouTube system sucks on the subscribers. Not everyone's going to see it unless you pay some money to promote it, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you, if you just kind of, like, view it as a slowly building contact kind of system, you're going to get places. So how would you, what would you, what advice would you give to, like, someone who's just starting, you know, writing music like us back in the day? I would say post and post and post, make some friends. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean like, back then, one of the best things was going on MSN every day and just making music with your friends, you know? It was so cool, and... You might not make music by yourself. You're all bummed out about something, but you got the friends in MSN. You're just being like me and Wildfire would just start being goofy. Mm-hmm. Just the voice clips. Like we take like one of my new songs, I'm all proud of, put it in a bad mood, and and Wildfire would start singing stuff on top of it. It's just so <laughs> funny. <laughs> Some <laughs> of it actually became going. songs. I know. Yeah, that's the funny part. What you're trying to say is like collaboration helps a lot. Yeah, collaboration really does help. And don't don't view people as competition. You should always join forces. I mean, there's there's no such thing as competition in the music world, if you ask me. Yeah. You just need to join up. I just like to personally say thanks for joining up on our podcast. Uh, you know, keep making that music, keep cranking that out, man, because you're you're doing wonderful, man. Like it's it's great to see an indie artist uh, succeed. You know, that's always a wonderful thing. You know, I know it's not easy in the music business. It's a very hard business to crack into. But man, you did it. You're fucking doing amazing, and I know your fans love you. And there's a good reason why your fans love you, and that's because you keep cranking out that good music, man. Oh, thanks, thanks so much. Yeah, I mean, if I had to sum, if I had to sum things up, I would just say, as a musician, you gotta work your butt off. But don't worry, you're gonna have a lot of lucky things on the way. Like I, I can't say I earned a million views, right? But I could say I definitely went at the music long enough in hopes of a million views and i kept going at it and going at it going at it and here i got it and maybe it won't last forever you have up and down years but just never have those down dates the most destructive thing to making music is your own mind music block i actually don't even believe in i think music block is is just a buildup of stress and whatever i mean if you can actually cheer yourself up get in the mood and you can just open fl studio just like find kicks do something i mean if you didn't make a song today just do stuff you know you do. If you made twenty. If you made twenty projects. Guess what? Maybe the next day you open one. You're like, hey, this isn't actually bad. I like this tune, and you got a song. Now you're making a song. So 
you know, you need to, you need to get thinking and doing stuff or talk with someone like, and I think that's what, where we came, where, where we got lucky. Cause we would just talk back and forth and be like, Oh, this would be cool. And that'd be awesome. Let's yeah, add this exactly. violin, violin, violin. Yeah. And then, and then that feeling will come through in the songs. You know, if, if you're moody, if you're moody someday trying to make a dubstep song, it's probably not going to be very thumping, you know, <laughs> called emo step, emo step, emo step. It's, sounds like a Egyptian God, right? <laughs> So if there's anything you'd want to tell your fans, anything at all, now's the time. Is there anything you want to say? Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. What a- no, I just want to say thank you guys all so much. Like all the comments, the reviews on Newgrounds, and the, the, like I, I read everything. If I don't reply, it doesn't mean I didn't see it. I, I spend hours just reading stuff, and it, it, it just blows me away. Thank you all so much. Do you have any plans for the future uh, that you want to share uh, with music as far as like on the podcast? Oh, yeah. Chinese Dance Machine Volume 2 is coming out. Uh, hopefully no later than March 15th, so we'll see what happens there. And I also was working on three other albums, but I decided I'm going to put them into a huge mega album for March 28th, which is my birthday, 10th anniversary of F777, and it's going to be free. Nice. Gonna have to buy nice. It. nice. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, 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 I'm completely being active on Newgrounds again. I, I, I've kicked myself in the butt for not... I only posted one song in 2016 to promote my album, and it was kind of like I felt really bad because Newgrounds made me. I lo- I have everything to owe Newgrounds, so I'm going to give a lot back this year. Well, uh, I hope to uh, maybe do some collabs with you in the future. It'd be nice to kind of get back into music with you. I miss doing music with you. Oh, man, I've already opened the files, man. I got them started. <laughs> good, good stuff. All right, with that being said and done, everyone, once again, we thank you for listening. We hope you've enjoyed this uh, rather interesting and beautiful interview with uh, F777. Also, I'm a guy, everybody. I'm not a girl. He's a dude. He's a dude. I'm a dude. I'm a dude. I'm a dude. Number one question I get. Really? Are you a guy or a girl? Yeah. Why? Why? Why do you think that is? The name? Well, because J- Jesse is a guy or girl's name, oh, but then the Valentine. Yeah. Valentine with it. I think people are thinking it could be a chick. Yeah. I, I, I guess yeah, I, I could can see, see that. that. No, th- again, thank you for being here, taking time out of your day to, to, to bullshit with us and answer some uh, fan questions. And just keep up the good work, man. Oh, are you kidding me? This is the most fun part of my day. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe next time, what I'll do is, uh, if we have you back, I might, I might have fans, or you know, I might have a little area on our Facebook page where fans can write, you know, some questions that they want me to ask you, and we can go from there. But you know, till then, this is what they get. This is what you get, people. <laughs> yeah, this is the in- this is the intro, <laughs> intro interview. So everyone. <laughs> We hope you have a good one. Thanks for listening this, to this uh, boss podcast, and we'll see you next week. Everybody Peace! Stay sexy.